أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الف لام ميم الله لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم نزل عليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه وانزل التوراة والانجيل من قبل هدى للناس وانزل الفرقان ان الذين كفروا بايات الله لهم عذاب شديد والله عزيز ذو انتقام ان الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء هو الذي يصوركم في الارحام كيف يشاء لا اله الا هو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم ارحمنا بالقران العظيم واجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته وانا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجه يا رب العالمين امين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. With the name of Allah and hoping and invoking His help in every respect, tonight we are starting the third surah of the Quran, that is Surah Al Imran. As I told you in the introductory lecture, most of the surahs of the Quran are in the form of prayers. This is the rule with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He has created everything in pairs. Wa min kull shayin khalaqna zawjain laalakum tazakkaroon. Everything we have created in pairs. We find in the Quran also, although we don't think it is something created, but this rule, you know, is so firm. that even in quran we find that the surahs are in pairs the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given one name to these two surahs az-zahra wa ain az-zahra the most shining so these are the two most shining surahs of the quran according to that hadith surah al-baqarah and surah ali imran and you find that the quran ends with al muawwazatain the two surahs which teach us tawuz how to take refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas subject matter is the same but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided it into two so that there is a pair muawwazatain two surahs which are teaching us tawuz how to do tawuz you will find that just as in surah al baqarah in the first section there are some fundamental rules about quran who can really benefit from quran qudal lil muttaqin alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna as-salah wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun ila al-akhir in the same way you will find in the first section of surah ali imran a very basic discussion about the understanding of quran in the same way 
Suratul Bakara, as we read last night, it ended with a very big dua, prayer. In the same way you will find that this surah, al mubarakah will also end. We have just, you know, recited the Imam in the second rakah of, of Surat Al-Isha, that prayer, a very long prayer, which comes in the last section of Surat al Imran. Then again, like Surat Al-Baqarah, it is also divisible into two parts. And here the parts are nearly equal, absolutely equal, I should say. Because the surah consists of 200 ayat divided into two sec 20 sections, 20 rukus. So on the average, every ruku contains 10 ayat. The first part of the surah consists of 101 ayat. And the second part of the surah consists of 99 ayat. 10 rukus in the first part, 10 rukus in the second part. Again, just like Surah Al-Baqarah, the first part is divisible into three sections. And in the middle section, as there was the direct address to Yehud, to the Jews, to Bani Israel, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati alamtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen. In the same way you will find in Surah Al-Imran, the address is to the other group of the people of the book. And they are the Christians. So, Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu was salam, his personality, his life, his mission, his dawah, it has been discussed in that middle section of the first, first half of the surah. So, there are many other points of similarity between these two surahs, but we shall, inshallah, see as we go through them. Otherwise, we will take much time in this introductory lecture. So, now we begin. Alif Lam Mim, again a point of similarity. Surah Al-Baqarah also started with Alif Lam Mim, and this Surah Mubarakah is also starting with Alif Lam Mim. I told you, there are six Surahs of the Qur'an in total, which begin with these letters, Alif Lam Mim. Two are here in the beginning, and they are, these are the Madani Surahs. Four are, you will find them later, in the 21st section, in the 21st part of the Qur'an, that is Surah Al-Ankabut, Surah Al-Rum, Surah Al-Sajda, Surah Al-Luqman. They four, they are Makki Surahs, and they also start with Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum. These words, exactly these words, we have read in Ayatul Kursi. Allah is He, that there is no God except Him. And He is al Hay, He is living. He is, his life is his own, not given by anybody else. Ever living al qayyum and he is sustaining and maintaining the whole of existence. Himself, he is self-sufficient, but the rest of the existence needs his support and sustenance to exist. al hayyul qayyum Nazzala alayka al-kitab bil haqq he has sent down this book, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with truth. And bilhaq means at different places differently. With truth and with a true purpose. It has been sent down with a purpose, not without a purpose. Musaddiqal lima bayna yadeh. And it has come confirming those scriptures which are present before it. Quran confirms Torah that this was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Moses alayhi salatu was salam. Quran confirms Injil that it was given to Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu was salam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One the Torah about Injil and he himself had sent down Torah and Injil min qabl before this Quran. Hudal lin nas. Those two books as well as this book they have been sent for guidance for humanity. Khudal linnas wa anzal al furqan and he has sent down the criterion with which you can differentiate between evil and good. You can differentiate between false and real. You can differentiate between what is correct and what is wrong. Inna ladina kafaru bi ayatillahi lahum azabun shadeed. Whosoever belies and denies the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them there is a very painful torment, a punishment which is very painful. 
واللہ عزیز انتقام اللہ از آل مائٹی آل پاور فل ہی ہیز آل دی اتھارٹی اینڈ ہی از ہو ٹیکس ریونج آلسو انتقام ان اللہ لا یخفا علیہ شعی ان فی الارض ولا فی السماء ویریلی نتنگ از ہیڈن فرام اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی آئیڈر اٹ از ان دی ارتھ اور اٹ از ان دی سکائز ہو اللذی یسب لکم فی الارحام کیف یشا It is He who fashions you in the wombs of your mothers as He likes. He has made everybody and actually this is His choice how He has made, how he has made you to look. None, no human being has His own choice. It is He who fashions you and as He likes. This is His discretion. هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَوِّ لُكُمْ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ كَيْفَ يَشَاءَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّهُ Again the same thing. Because this is the central theme of the Qur'an, Tawheed. There is no God except Him. None to be worshipped except Him. None to be obeyed, independent of Him. You can obey others, but under the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience. Huwa al-Aziz al-Hakim. Again, al-Aziz. Al-Aziz is the person who has the total authority. Without any checks and balances. He can do whatever he likes. He is Al-Aziz. So he has the authority. Al-Hakim. But this authority is with wisdom. On the one hand, he is all authorized, all mighty, all powerful. On the other hand, he is the wise. His wisdom is also complete. So that authority cannot be misused. It is always used with wisdom. Now comes that very important discussion about the understanding of the Qur'an. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ It is He who has sent down on you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, this book. مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرَوْ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ It consists of two types of ayat. مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ Some of its ayat are fortified Absolutely clear in its meaning and connotation. Hunna ummul kitab. They are the foundation, they are the basis of the law. Law actually rests on ayat e muhkamat, which are fortified and absolutely self-evident. There can be no doubt about their meaning. Wa ukharu mutashabihat. And the other type of ayat in the Quran, they are mutashabihat. They are allegorical. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِ Why are allegorical? Now there is a question we must understand. Because you know all the phenomena of the unseen universe, we cannot understand them. Of the ghayb, unseen. Because no human being has seen that world. Therefore when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the description of the unseen, about the angels, about the hereafter, about the paradise, the heavens, about the hell. Now these things are unseen for man. Hence, you know, to describe those things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used examples, similes, allegories. And now these things, you know, they can be interpreted definitely in different ways. Uh, actually, this is the difference between muhkamat and mutashabihat. There can be difference of interpretation about mutashabihat because they are allegories. But about the muhkamat, there can be no difference of opinion. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ So those people in whose hearts there is some disease, their intentions are wrong. فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ They are always after those ayat who are allegorical. And they want to know ابْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَعْوِيلَهُ They want to create discord and they want to know the real meanings of those ayat which is impossible for man because that world is unseen for him he cannot exact exact connotation of these things cannot be understood by man these things will become clear to us after the death and after we go to the hereafter then things will be clear otherwise before this these mutashabih ayat we have to believe in them 
but we cannot understand the exact meanings of those ayat which are describing the life hereafter, the unseen world. One rasikhuna fil ilm. Now that was the attitude of those who have some disease in their hearts. They are always after the mutashabihat. One rasikhuna fil ilm. On the other hand, those people who are well rooted in knowledge, who know the limitations of human intellect. This is the message, you know. You must know what's our limitations. Everybody should know what is my limitation. Man should know what is the limitation of human intellect. It cannot reach everything and every place. It cannot comprehend everything. There is the saying in, in Persian language, Malumam shud kehich malum na shud. In the end, you know, most of the learned people, they are forced to say that now I know that I know nothing. A person very low in knowledge, he thinks he is very knowledgeable. But as, as you know, the knowledge increases, then man understands that he knows very little. Malum am shud. Kehich malum na shud. Today I have understood and appreciated that I, that I didn't know anything. I am standing there. The real problems of this universe are still unsolved. Does any scientist know the length and breadth of this universe? Despite, you know, all the telescopes and, you know, the big means that we have at our disposal. Nobody knows where it begins, where it ends. No physiologist says that he knows what is life. We don't know. Where is it attached to in the body? How does it slip away when man dies? We don't know even today what is sleep. How do we sleep? Where is the switch in the brain? Then when it is put off, a man goes to sleep. And when it is put on, a man gets up. Nobody knows. So fundamental questions are still this is the unsolved in the same way. Although the explosion of knowledge is so great that it has become impossible for a human being to know, to have all the knowledge of all the sciences. Impossible. Even then, the basic questions are still insoluble. They cannot be solved. So we must understand the limitations. That is why we found in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَضَلِّ الْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ The first condition, if you want to benefit from the guidance of this book is that you must understand that the real realities, the final realities, they belong to another world that is unseen for us. And we cannot approach it with the limited means that we have at our disposal. Our senses, our intellect, we, are, we can only approach things and, and try to get knowledge through these two things. And you know they are limited. So, people who know the limitations of human knowledge, they say, يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلُّ مِنْ رَبِّنَا This is their saying. They say, we believe in this Qur'an, in all of this Qur'an, كُلُّ مِنْ رَبِّنَا All of is, all of it is from our Lord. وَمَا يَزَّكْرُ إِلَّا أُلُّ الْبَابِ But you know, only people who are of deep understanding they can reach this reminding and they can attain to this position. Otherwise, people who are small in knowledge, they think they are very knowledgeable. Rabbana la tuzid kulubana. These people are rasikhuna fil ilm. They go on praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana la tuzid kulubana ba'da is hadaytana. O our Lord, don't let our hearts go astray. After you have given him given it the guidance. After the guidance has dawned on us, we have understood what is guidance. Now, please don't let our hearts go astray. And grant for us the mercy from your own presence. In Nakant al Wahhab, definitely, surely, it is only you who bestows mercy. Rabbana in Nakajamirun Nas in Yomi Lara Bafi. Here in the first section also we have three ayat in which one supplication, one prayer is contained. And in the last section also you'll find three ayat consisting of that prayer. Which those brothers who 
were there with the Isha congregation, they, they listened to those ayat in the second rakah. Rabbana inna ka jami'un nasir yawmi la rebafi. O our Lord, we know it, that you will gather the whole of humankind and humanity for a day about which there is no doubt, la rebafi, that day is to come. There is no doubt about it. Inna Allah la yukhliful mi'ad. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't go back on his promises. He has promised that he will gather you. He will reward his faithful bondsmen. So he is not going to go back to break his promise. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَنْ تُغْنِي عَنْهُمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَّا Verily those who have taken to kufr, to disbelief, to denying the Qur'an and Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم لَنْ تُغْنِي عَمْهُمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ Their progeny, their children, and likewise their wealth and their money will be of no avail to them when they will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأُولَائِكَ هُمْ وَقُودُ النَّارِ And they have to become the fuel of the fire of hell. فَدَعْبِ عَلَى فِرْعَونَ Just like the people of Fir'aun, وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ And not only Fir'aun, the other nations before him, before them, people of Hud, people of Saleh, the nation of Aad, the nation of Samud, the people of Lut, alayhi salatu wa salam, and so on, the people of Shaib, alayhi salatu wa salam, people of Lut, alayhi salatu wa salam. Now there is, this is the example of the former people, former nations to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers. كَدَعْبِ عَلَى فِرْعَوْنَ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا They also belied our signs and our ayat, denied them, they rejected them. فَأَخَذَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ So Allah seized them due to their sins and misdeeds. وَاللَّهُ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابُ And Allah is very severe in punishment. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people who are rejecting you, قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Tell them, سَتُغْلَبُونَ وَتُحْشَرُونَ إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمْ You will also be defeated. You will also be overpowered. In this world, you will be overpowered, defeated. تُغْلَبُونَ وَتُحْشَرُونَ إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمْ And in the hereafter, you will be taken and driven towards the fire of hell. وَبِيسَ الْمِحَادِ And it is a very bad resting place. قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ آيَةٌ فِي فِيَتَانِ الْتَقَطَى I should have told you that this surah was revealed after the battle of Uhud. That's the difference between Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed before the battle of Badr. And Surah Al-Imran was revealed most of it. Except certain parts which I will let you know afterwards. The Surah Al Imran was revealed after the Battle of Uhud. So there is a difference of more than one year between the time of revelation of Surah Al Baqarah and Surah Al Imran. Because the Battle of Badr was held in the month of Ramadan in the second year after Hijrah. And the Battle of Uhud was fought in the month of Shawwal in the third year after Hijrah. So one year plus one month, that is the difference between the two, two battles. And now you add something before Badr and after Uhud. So nearly one and a quarter years gap between the time of the revelation of Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah al ibran And most of it you will find 60 ayat, nearly one third of the surah. It consists from ayah 121 to ayah number 180. It's a long commentary by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the events of the battle of Uhud. But here you know, an example is being given of the battle of Badr. The same thing that is continuing, which was being said to the kuffar, who were rejecting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ آيَةٌ فِي الْفِيَةَ لِلْتَقَطَى For you there has been a sign. 
in the two armies that who confronted each other here the word badr is not given but we know that that this example is of the battle of badr qad kana lakum ayatun fi fiyatin taqata the two hosts the two armies that faced each other in the field of badr to fiyatun taqatil fi sabilillah one party one army one group was fighting for the cause of allah that is muhammad rasulullah wal ladina ma'ahu they were fighting for the cause of allah wa ukhra kafiratun the other group the other party the other army was of the kuffar of the non believers yarawnahum mislayhim ra'y al ain the muslims were seeing that they are facing an army which is clearly double than their own number although the number was three three times but at least it was apparent that we have to to combat with an army which is twice in in number and strength than ourselves wallahu yuayyidu lisahi may yasha but allah subhanahu wa taala helps and supports with his help whomsoever he wants whomsoever he pleases that is it's a sign with you that allah subhanahu wa taala gave his help to the muslims and they could defeat an army which was more than double the number of theirs they had more arms than the muslims but still allah taala subhanahu wa taala gave victory to the muslims in the fi zalika in this definitely in the fi zalika ibratan li ul absar there is a lesson for those who have eyes who can see who can see for themselves so this one event is sufficient to give them the guidance زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسوبة إلى آخر الآية. Alluring and attractive has been made for the people, the player from women and sons, and the players of gold and silver, والخيل المسوبة. and well bred horses wal anam and cattle wal hars and the tillage and the farms all these things you know they are very attractive they allure people towards themselves all human beings you know after these things hubbu shahwat min an nisa the pleasures from the women and the sons and then you know the hoarding of wealth in the forms of gold and silver and then well bred horses that was the you know very big precious thing in olden days even today they are very costly wal anam and cattle wal hars and farms cultivations zalika mataul hayat ad dunya all these things are articles of use for this world nothing else they have no other reality no no permanence in them this world and the life where we are passing that here in this world which is fleeing and fleeting all these things are only for this world mataul hayat ad dunya wallahu indahu husnul maab and it is only with allah that it is the good goal to return whosoever has in his mind that he has to go to allah at actually of value is those things that allah subhanahu wa taala has with him قُلْ أَوْ نَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْ ذَلِكُمْ Ask them, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, should I tell you what is much better than these things? You are all after these things. All your struggle, all your hard work is to get and gather more and more of these articles, and that's all. Should I tell you what is much better than all these things? لِلَّذِينَ تَقَوَّى إِنَّ رَبَّهِمْ For those who have taqwa. who are really god fearing who who have the fear of allah subhanahu wa taala for them will be jannatun tajri min tahti al anhar the gardens under each which there will be rivers flowing khalidin fiha they will be live there forever forever wazwajun mutahharatun and they will have spouses very pure what is wanum min allah and the highest thing would be the player of allah subhanahu wa taala their lord 
their creator, their sustainer, he will be pleased with them. Wallahu basirun bil ibad, and Allah is seeing his bondsmen. He is seeing what they are doing. Who are those bondmen? Alladina yakulun rabbana innana amanna, fafir lana zunubana wa kina adab al-nar. Who say, O oh our Lord, we come to believe. believe. We believe in you. We believe in your Prophet, in your Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We testify that there is no God except you, and Muhammad is your bondsman and messenger. Faqfir lana zunubana. So please forgive for us our shortcomings, our sins. Waqina azab al nar. And save us on the day of judgment, in the hereafter, from the punishment of fire. الصابرين والصادقين والقانتين والمنفقين والمستغفرين بالأسعار. And now are the that, that was the prayer. And what are the, their qualities? What are their attributes? What are the salient features of their character? الصابرين. People who have perseverance, show patience. الصادقين. Who are truthful in whatever say. And even whatever they do, they act on truth and they say truth. Walqanitin, and who are obedient. Walmunfiqin, who expend and give away their wealth for the pleasure of Allah. Walmustaffirin abil ashar, and who ask for His forgiveness in the small hours of the morning, at the dawn, when people are sleeping. You know, they are. They are standing or prostrating before their lords, they, before their lord, and they are, are asking for his, for his forgiveness. Allahumma rabbana ja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us among these people. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is himself witness. He testifies that there is no God except him. Who can, be, who can be a bigger witness than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself? Shahid Allah. Allah himself is witness to it. He testifies that there is no God except him. Wal malaikatu. And all the angels testify. Qawlul ilm. And from among the human beings who have the real knowledge, they also testify. Allahumma rabbana yalla minhum. Again we should say. Qaimam bil qist. He is the upholder of equity and justice. He is controlling this universe, this existence with just balance. La ilaha illa hu al-Aziz al-Hakim. There is no God except Him. And He is al-Aziz, again the same two attributes. Al-Aziz, all-powerful, almighty. But all-wise also. His wisdom is also complete. Inna ad-deena inda Allah al-Islam. The only deen, now let me tell you here, in all the translations you will find the word for deen, religion. This is not the correct, correct explanation, but we don't find any word, you know, that can give the real translation of the word deen. Religion has a very limited connotation. Religion consists of only three things. Some dogma, some modes of worship. Some social customs, that's all. It has to do nothing with the political, socio-economic system. That's all important. The most important thing, you know, for all human beings is the political, socio-economic system. Whether it is based on justice, fair play, equality, fraternity, or whether it is based on repression or exploitation or discrimination. So actually, the more important thing is the system the political, social, economic system. So deen actually consists of all these six things. There is a dogma in deen also, tawheed, risala, ma'ad. Then modes of worship are also there. Then rites and rituals are also there. The social customs are also there. But it has a social system of its own. It has a political system of its own. It has an economic system of its own. So it's an all-comprehensive, all-embracing phenomenon. But I don't find one word in English language which can give the connotation and express the full meanings of the word deen. 
In the deen in the lahir Islam. Now the translation will find everywhere the only religion that is acknowledged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. But you must keep the word deen. Just as I told you in the very beginning, I cannot use any word in the place of ayah. Ayah is ayah. We, we don't have any other word to replace for its translation. Surah is surah. It's not chapter. In the same way, deen is deen. We can't translate it. In the deen in the lahir Islam. The only deen acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledged by him, is Islam. وَمَخْتَلَفَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْعِلْمُ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ And to those people whom we give the book, we gave the book before, they didn't differ, but only after the real knowledge had come to them. We had sent them the Torah, and we had given them the knowledge, but still they differed among themselves. The light was there. They were not in the darkness. But still, you know, they didn't avail of the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided them. And what was the reason? Baghiyam bainahum. Out of jealousy among themselves. And this baghiyam, you know actually, I translated it last night also, the urge to dominate. It's Adler's view that the very potent motive in, in human beings is the urge to dominate. Everybody wants to dominate others. And this is the reason and cause of the conflict. So they want to dominate each other. And due to this urge of domination and this jealousy among themselves, they have been differing with each other. And now that the clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have again been sent to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now whosoever among them, he denies these ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very swift in reckoning. He will take no time. فَإِنْحَاجُّكَ And now if, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these people argue with you, they dispute with you, فَقُلْ Tell them, in unequivocal terms, أَسْلَمْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّهِ وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي I have surrendered myself, my whole personality to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only myself, but all those people who are following me. We have surrendered. We have submitted. And now ask those to whom the book was given before, the Jews, the Christians. And also those whom no book was given, the pagan Arabs. Of, of the Arabian Peninsula. Ask them both. Aslam tum. Do you also surrender? Do you also agree to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Fine aslamu. If they surrender, if they submit, faqadeh tadaw. They have, they have the guidance. Now they are guided. They are on the path of guidance. Fine tawallaw. And if they turn away, fine nama alayk al bala. Then your duty was only to convey to them. That's all. You are not responsible for bringing them to the right path. It's not in your power and it's not your responsibility. This burden has not been put on your shoulders. Neither its power has been given to you. Your duty is to convey the message. Once you have done it, you have done your job. Now it's up to them whether they want to accept and respond positively or they want to refuse. Wallahu basirun bil ibad. But whatever they do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing who is turning away and whose heart had confirmed that this is correct. Allah knows. Just as we read in Surah Al Baqarah, Yarifunahu kama yarifun abnahum. These Jews, he have recognized Muhammad and this Quran just as they recognize their own sons. There's no doubt about him in their minds, but still they are not ready to accept. They are not ready to believe. Allah, Wallahu Basiru bin Ibad, Allah very well knows his bondsmen. Inna al-Ladina yakfuruna bi ayat Allah wa yakuluna al-Nabiyina bi ghairi haqq. Now these all issues have been discussed, you know, in Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah. Already we have read them. Verily those know, verily those people, Inna al-Ladina yakfuruna bi ayat Allah, who deny and belie. The ayat of Allah, the signs of Allah. 
and who have been killing and murdering the prophets of Allah بغير حق without any reason ويقتلون الذين يأمرون بالقسط and they have been killing and murdering those people who wanted to enjoy and join upon them whatever is good من الناس from among the people فبشرهم بعذاب النليم O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you give them the glad tidings of a very severe punishment, of a very painful torment. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ حَبِتَ تَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ They are the people whose deeds, whose actions have gone in vain. They have been futile in this world also and in the hereafter also. Because although they were, you know, they didn't accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they were Jews. They were practicing Jews. They thought that we are on the right path. They used to pray. They used to act on the sharia of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. So they thought that we have a lot of good deals with us. When we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not going there empty-handed. We have much with us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Muhammad tell them, all their good deeds have gone vain, futile, habitat amalu. Because if they have not accepted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does it mean? It means they were not sincere. Had they been sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how could have they rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It proves that all their good deeds before also, they were baseless. They were not based on sincerity. And any good deed without sincerity is equal to zero. In the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it carries no weight. Ulaika al-lazina habitat a'maluhum fi dunya wa l-akhirah wa ma'alahum min nasirin. Alam tara ila al-lazina utu nasiba min al-kitab yudawna ila kitab illahi li yahkuma bainahum. Didn't you see, didn't you consider the matter of those people who were given a portion of the book? Actually all these books go to make one book, al-kitab. Torah and Injil were the former editions of the same book. So they were given a portion of the book. Torah and Injil, so to say, were a portion of the book. Then you should see towards them to whom a portion of the book was given when they are invited to the book of Allah so that it can judge between them. لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ سُمَّ يَتَوَلَّا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ وَهُمْ وَرِدُونَ But a party of them, some of them, they turn their backs away and they are averse to it. They don't want to get their matters and affairs judged by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as we people, Muslims. It did happen, you know, in the Indian subcontinent during the British Raj. The Britishers had given the option to the Muslims that if they like, their property would be distributed according to the Islamic law of inheritance. Even through the course of the Britishers. But the Muslims used to stand up in the court and say, we don't need Sharia. We know the reward, whatever is common with us, you know, what is our, our custom, we want our decision according to custom, we don't want Sharia at all. The same is the case here. Alam tara ilal lazina utu nasibam min al-kitab. Didn't you see towards them who were given a portion of the book? When they are invited, yud'awna ilal kitab illah, towards the book of Allah. Le yahkobo bainahu, so that it should judge between them. Summa yatawalla fariqu minhum wa hum waridun. A party, some of them, they turn their backs away and they are averse to it. Zalika bi'annahum qalu lal tamassan andaru illa ya ba ba'adudat. Why this attitude? What's the reason of this attitude? This is because they think, they say, that the fire of hell cannot touch us except for a few days. That was their forged belief which made them so bold. Because if they were, you know, so to, so to say, they were uh, free from the punishment of the hell. Then why to have Sharia and why to act according to the Sharia? If you have the fear of the day of judgment, if you have to fear, if, if you have to the fear of the lasting torment and punishment of Jahannam, then you will have to think twice before saying anything. But when they had concocted, they had invented, they had forged these beliefs. ذَٰلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا لَنْ تَبَسَّلَ النَّارُ إِلَّا يَامَ مَعْدُودَاتِ وَغَرْنَهُمْ فِي دِينَهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ And whatever they had concocted, whatever they had invented, that has deceived them regarding their deen. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جَمَعْنَاهُمْ What will happen to them? They should imagine. And they should imagine what will happen to them. لِيَوْمِ اللَّهِ رَيْبَ فِي When we shall gather them 
for that day about which there is no doubt wa wufiyat kullu nafsin bima kasabat and every soul will be paid in full what it had earned wa hum la yuzlamun and they will not at all be wronged qul allahumma malikal mulk now it's again a very a very big very important dua and prayer qul allahumma say pray allahumma malikal mulk o oh allah the sovereign of the whole dominion of the whole universe Total bull come on the shah. You give the dominance to whom you will. What turns the whole bull come on the shah? And you take away the governance from whom you you like. What raises the on the shah? You give you give honor and you exalt anybody that you like. What to zil on the shah? And you put to humiliation anyone whom you desire. Be a little khair. All good is in your hand. You have the authority for everything. You give honor to whom you like. You give superiority in this world to whom you like. You give humiliation to whom you like. You you give the government or superiority in some land to whom you like. Be it the khair, all good is in your hands. In the kala kulli shayin qadir, and you are all powerful. You have power over everything. Two le jule la fin nahar. You make the night enter into day, but two le jule nahar a fin leil, and you make the the day enter into night. That is, you make the night longer so that the day is becoming shorter, and the reverse of it, the day is becoming becoming longer so that the night is becoming shorter. It is as if night is entering the day and the day is entering the night. تولج الليل في النهار وتولج النهار في الليل وتخرج الحي من الميت من الميت وتخرج الميت من الحي and you raise the living from the dead and the dead from the living وترزق من تشاء بغير حساب and you give and you provide to whom you to whom you like without any measure or account لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين The believers shouldn't take friends. Shouldn't make friends with kafirin, with kuffar, with the non-believers, in preference to the believers. But may Allah fall down. Whosoever will do, will take to this attitude, will adopt this attitude. For Laisa bin Allah fi shay, he has no connection whatsoever with Allah. Illa anta taqo bin hum taqa, except that. You have to guard yourself against them, as you have to guard. You know, if you think that somebody can do you harm, and you are polite with him only due to save yourself from his harm, is something else. But to have real love, real friendship with the non-Muslims, it doesn't be it doesn't behove of a Muslim. It doesn't become of a Muslim. Muslims should have Muslims as their friends. Muslims should try to make friends among the Muslims. لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين وما يفعل ذلك فليس من الله في شيء. Then he will have nothing to do with Allah سبحانه وتعالى whatsoever. إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقاء. Except that if you have to to be polite with them only to save yourself from their harm. ويحذركم الله نفسه وإلى الله المصير. And Allah is warning you to beware of him. To be aware of Allah's Allah's punishment, when you have the look of Allah, who loves you, while Allah is Masir, and towards Allah is going to be your return. All in to fuma fi sudure kuma tu duho. Now this is the same subject which was in the last section of Surah Al-Baqarah. In to fuma fi sudure kum, whether you hide or conceal whatever is in your in your chests and hearts, or tu duho, or whether you Announce it. Ya Allahu Allah, Allah knows it. Allah's knowledge doesn't depend on what you are saying. Allah knows what is there in your hearts. Wa ya Allahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard, and He knows whatever is in the in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Wa ma Allahu ala kulli shayin qadir, and Allah is powerful on everything. Ya Uma Taala, do kullu nafsi ma amilat min khairin muhdara. The day. That is the day of judgment. 
when every soul will be confronted with whatever it had done. يَوْمَ تَجَدُ كُلُّ نَفْسِ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا It will be present before it. It will find before it whatever it had done. وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُو Whatever good it had done, it will find before it. Whatever bad it had earned, whatever evil it had earned, it will find before it. تَوَدُّ لَوْا أَنَّ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا بَيْنَهُ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا Every soul with very much long that there would have been very long distance between him and the and the bad deeds. But you have to come Allah Nafsa again the same words. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is warning you to beware of him. Wallahu raufum bil ibad and Allah is very kind with the people. Qul in kuntum tuhibun Allah fattabi'uni. A very important ayah. Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if you want to love Allah, in kuntum tuhibun Allah, if you really love Allah, fattabi'uni, then follow me. Yuhdibkum Allah. What will be the result? Allah will love you. Now these two words are different, and please note them here. To obey Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And to follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there is a difference between the two. Obedience is to a command. When he has expressly said "do it," and you are doing it, it is obeying. When he has expressly said "don't do it," and you are refraining from it, then you are obeying. But you know he has not said anything. But you find what he is doing, and you try to copy him. That is following. It's at a higher level. He has not commanded you to do it, but you see him doing something, and you are copying him. You are following him without any express command from him. This is ittiba, and that is ita. Obedience ita. Ita is essential for every Muslim, but ittiba is the higher level, spiritual level. It's a very high spiritual level. So you will find here in two ayat. First of all, ittiba, and then the ita. Both things are discussed here. Call in kuntum to hibun Allah for tabi uli yohbib kum Allah. Tell them if you love Allah, so follow me. This is ittiba, the higher level. That is why the result is yohbib kum Allah. You will become the beloved of Allah. You are loving Him now. You are the beloved of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is the result of ittiba. By yafir lakum zunuba kum. And whatever be your mistakes and sins, He will forgive you. Wallahu ghafurur rahim. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. Qul atiyu Allah wa Rasul. Now here is ita'a. Tell them you have to obey anyhow Allah as well as His Messenger. Fain tawalla wa fain Allah la yuhibu al-kafirin. And if they turn away, Allah doesn't like this kuffar. To refuse to obey Muhammad is kuffar. So that is the basis. You have to obey him anyhow, whether you like the order or command or not. You have to obey. This is the fundamental requirement of being a Muslim. But if you go higher, if you want to go higher up, then you see whatever he has been doing and you try to follow it. Follow in his example that this is the higher level and that is called tiba. Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuhan wa Ala Ibrahim wa Ala Imran wa Ala Al Alamin. We shall translate this next ayat in the next session. But please, the few minutes that we have, let me give you the uh, introduction about these ayat. Now, I told you that the first half of this surah Al Imran can be divided into two, three portions. The first portion ends at the ayah number thirty-two that we have completed. Second section is starting from ayah number thirty-three and it will go to ayah number sixty-four, thirty-one, thirty-two ayat. Now these ayat were revealed in the ninth year after Hijra, very far off. The rest of the whole surah was revealed in the third year after Hijra, but these thirty or more ayat they were revealed in the ninth year after Hijra, when a deputation of the ulama, of the knowledgeable person, people who are very high in hierarchy, religious hierarchy, of the Christians of Najran, Najran was a Christian colony. In the, on the southern side of Hijaz, and there the Christians were living, and from there a deputation of their ulama and their 
high priests, they came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the ninth year after Hijrah. And there was a dialogue. There was a the dialogue about the beliefs of Islam. And you know, at that time these ayat were revealed. But they have been placed in this Quran, in Surah Al-Imran Bhai, to became, to, so that it should become similar to Surah Al-Baqarah. Because in Surah Al-Baqarah, the discussion was with, with the Jews. Ya Bani Israel, as kuru ni'mati yallati yadamtu alaykum, wa'afu bi'ahdi ufi bi'ahdikum, wa'yaya farhaboon. Here, this is the second individual of the pair. The pair, you know, of Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran. And you know, the other group of Ahle Kitab is the Christians. So here in this Surah Al-Mubarakah, the discussion with regarding the Christians and their beliefs that have been placed here, although it was revealed much later than the rest of the Surah Al-Imran. So here, you know, we will we'll find very good discussion about who Jesus was, what was his real position, how, who was Mary, and actually then the parallel case of Hazrat Yahya alayhi salatu was salam, Hazrat Zakriya, all these things we find also in the Bhakti Quran in Surah Al Maryam. But here, you know, special occasion, you know, that demanded that these things should be in a fresh way, they should be discussed. When those people came for, for discussion and dialogue and argument with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so these ayat are revealed, were revealed in the ninth year after Hijrah, and we shall study them in the next session, inshallah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr hakim. The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.